Hey everyone, Father Richard here, back again with my friend Hudson Dublo. We just wanted to give a quick perspective on one of the latest things that came out in the news, in which the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith answered a very important question that was on the minds and hearts of many people. The question was, does the church have the power to give the blessing to unions of persons of the same sex? And the response was negative. Hudson, if someone asked you this question, how would you respond? Does the church have the power to give the blessing to unions of persons of the same sex? Okay, so if someone asked me that very good question, um, I think well, I first want to say when I read that statement, um, I, I had never thought of things through the lens of sacramentals, which it talks about, and I thought that was really interesting. Um, but where, where I came to understand uh, the church's response on this was through first uh, understanding through my own journey that the church wasn't actually the inventor of truth. The church actually upholds truth. So there's like whatever God has authored into creation visibly and invisibly, the church says, points it out and says, this is true and we uphold it. And then through that, one thing after another in my mind was able to uh, was shattered in my previous ideas and suddenly church teachings made sense the the teachings of the church or rather the truths upheld by the church made sense and one of those uh one part of that is that god authored order into our universe um and 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 there's order amongst humanity and there is things i mean we're taking just aside from all the feelings and attractions and stuff there is such a thing as how things work like you put two rabbits in a cage like you may or may not get little rabbits based on those two rabbits like that's not something that you can you know um you know dismiss based on how you feel you know and so in my journey i had to realize that the, tr the church was upholding truth and then what this brought me to realize was that there, there are there are some things that um, because the church upholds truth, if something is pointed to something that is counter to the truths of creation, um, it's actually counter to the church. Mm. So that question for me was settled long before this came up in the news is so that the church obviously can't um, put its blessing on something that counters it counters the truths of creation. Mm. And part of the truth of creation, um, in, in terms of uh, the, the sexual realm, of course, is that there's, a, there's the, comp the, the, the physiological complementarity of male and female, uh, which of course is, uh, and the fact that we are created male or female, which are two components of, uh, of, of successful integration of our sexuality. Like we have to acknowledge and accept those things in order to accept successful integration of our sexuality, which of course is the foundation for chastity. Now, of course, it took me years to kind of like get to that point of understanding, but that's really what it is. It's like I, I, I fell in love with pursuing the virtue of chastity long before I understood what it meant. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I had inklings and ideas because of the joy that people had and the joy that I found by pursuing it. And then I realized that, no, this is all to do with ordering myself and my desires back with what God has authored. Mm -hmm. And here I'm talking about me now, but in the, in the broader sense, I, I had, I came back to faith largely through mathematics, as crazy as that sounds, but I knew that one after another, uh, every time that I found something that was true or discovered something that was true or made a distinction between things that uh, were not the same, such as, even such as, uh, you know, uh, behaviors and a person, personhood and behaviors, um, I, one by one, I found that the church was upholding this to be true. And I'm like, what else don't I know? It helped me realize there was so much for me to learn about the church, whereas before I thought I had known so much and I really didn't know what I thought I knew. I didn't know as much as I thought I knew. So yeah, there was, there's order that the church um, upholds the truths written into creation and 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 the order of creation and so like things that are not in alignment with the order of creation if you take out take out all of our feelings and our desires and stuff just, I just i'm talking about like take a snapshot in of time in the universe and say how do things work what are they ordered to 
um, the church can't bless any anything that's counter to to the order of of hmm. of creation. Yeah, no, it's very helpful in in so far as like the church does not make up the truth. She has been given the truth by her founder, Jesus Christ, and therefore the church knows that a key truth in that's been written into the human person is that our sexuality has an inbuilt purpose ordered toward an end. And so for unions, that purpose is towards marriage. When you think about male and female, the complementarity of a union, there's a specific purpose inbuilt into that complementarity in which they will be married and they'll be able to unite together and procreate, have children. And so the church, even in her liturgy, there's an inbuilt purpose to that liturgy. And so sacramentals, which are a part of the liturgy, have a specific purpose. They're ordered toward the nuptial blessing that we see in marriage. And so for the church to do anything that's not properly ordered toward that end, the church is going against the truth that, that Jesus has given her. And so it's very clear in so far as like the church has a specific order to which everything is oriented. And we need to always keep that in mind that um, this order is, is an essential part of understanding why the church does not have the power to bless unions of the person of persons of the same sex. So for the persons themselves, when they're pursuing God, they're on the right order and, and the church can give blessings to that. But when they're ever involved in any relationships or things in their lives that are not ordered toward that end, the church cannot bless it. Is that a fair yeah. understanding? Of what yeah, and, and I love how this is about all people, right? Because it's it, very many, many people might say you're picking on gay people. Well, you're picking on and that's how I felt you're picking on me right and it's actually it's like no like this is across the board um the, the order uh, aligning our desires to the order is something that the church proposes the church proposes chastity it doesn't impose it proposes chastity and and we can choose that no matter who who we are or what relational configuration we are in and and I, I know that when when people um, choose to embrace chastity, like that is a choice they're making for themselves. It cannot, like I said, it cannot be imposed. Um, and and then from that, there 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 are you know shifts in how they respond to um, life, basically the relationships and, and and the desire to to align ourselves to to uh, the order that God has authored into creation um you know that, that makes us uh it did for me anyway it, it just made me rethink a lot of things about about wh what i was doing and mm -hmm. and again like it doesn't matter if a person is experiences same-sex attractions or opposite sex attractions or if they're in a same-sex relationship or an opposite sex relationship like the, the the desire to enter into order it, when people embrace that that makes them you know shift their their desired behaviors even in like you know opposite sex marriages too because there's a lot of there's a lot of disorder disorder um you know desires that, that are that are not ordered towards what has been written into creation that's what i'm saying disorder i know some people are going to think that i'm talking about disorder as it's used in the secular world i'm not i'm thinking disorder in kind of in terms of like like there's an order in mathematics, you know what I mean? Like there's a column and there's a line and order of what has been structured. That's the only way I'm using this word here. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's an everybody thing, right? It's mm. an everybody thing. And, it, and again, it was, it, was, it was me who was rejecting the order for a long time. And um, I, I, would, I would conveniently blame the church that the church was rejecting me, which wasn't true at all. Um, and that, that speaks to the whole thing both between the person and, and the blessing of a person and the blessing of a you know a behavior like a, a same-sex union or any union uh, is the result of people's choices to enter into union right so that's the result of behavioral choices and 
And so now the, the, the question is like, should the church bless behavioral choices versus bless the person, right? God blesses people, all people. He can bless all of us people, all of the sinful man and stuff. Um, uh, but that's different than behaviors because it's like it says, and those behaviors are, they're not pointed to what, to fulfilling the order that God has written into creation. Mm-hmm. Like, and I hope this conversation includes an openness to understand the terminology used by the church, right? Order, nature, sin, holiness. The church uses these words in a specific way. And, and a lot of our world doesn't. And so if that, if, if we don't go there, then we have this happening. We have a lack of communi- a communication breakdown. And so I hope that people will open their hearts to, to look towards the church's understanding of the words to, to, to try to understand what the church is saying. That would be great. <laughs> yeah, good point. Clarity of language, precision of our terms and everything is an essential part of being able to dialogue with truth and love for other people. So hopefully this uh, inspired you to engage more in the conversation, to pursue the truth of the Catholic church, to be open to dialogue with other people so that we can lead many of our brothers and sisters to the fullness of faith in the Catholic church. Hudson, thanks for the time. Uh, God bless you. And we'll uh, continue the conversation again. Okay, take care. Sounds good. God bless you too. Thank you.